you are looking at a supermodel. No, not me. My friend's here on my left. The Naked Mole Rat. So hello and welcome to the Cheeky Science Show where in this video we're going to look at naked mole rats and why in the world of animal models the naked mole rats are the supermodels. So once we've looked at why naked mole rats are supermodels we'll then try and look at some of the mechanisms that underpin why naked mole rats seem to be able to evade cancer development and also seem not to age. But firstly, what are naked mole rats? Characterised by their wrinkled skin and large protruding teeth, naked mole rats are rodents that live in large subterranean colonies. Living underground in East Africa, the temperature remains pretty constant, so the naked mole rats have no need for insulation, and hence why they're called the naked mole rats, as they've lost their fur. But their nudity isn't the reason why they are supermodels. Instead, it is because they are beautiful on the inside, and for their small size, they have an extremely long lifespan. In captivity, naked mole rats have been shown to live up to 32 years. That's eight times longer than mice of a similar size that can live at most around four years in captivity. But that isn't the only reason that makes naked mole rats supermodels. They are also very resistant to cancer. To put this into some perspective, Around 50 to 90% of aged mice die of cancer, and in humans, this number is lower, around 23%. Indeed, different animal species dramatically differ in their cancer rates and ages of disease onset. This is a bit of a paradox. Pito's paradox, actually. The name of this paradox came from Richard Pito, who reasoned that the cells in large-bodied, long-lived animals undergo more cell divisions and with every cell division carrying a small risk of introducing mutations in daughter cells, which could lead to cancer development, you may expect large-bodied, long-lived animals to have a greater risk of cancer than small, short-lived ones. However, this isn't always the case, as evidenced by the fact that mice have a greater cancer rate than humans. Now, you might be thinking, but naked mole rats fit this trend. For their body size, they have a really low rate of tumour development. However, another factor influencing the risk of cancer is lifespan. There is great evolutionary pressure to have effective anti-cancer mechanisms before reproductive age, otherwise the animal would leave no progeny. After reproductive age then, cancer becomes more frequent as the animals are no longer subjected to natural selection. However, this just makes Pito's paradox the more complicated. So how come the longest lived rodent, the naked mole rat, not only has extreme anti-cancer mechanisms, but also has a long lifespan for its size? What is their secret? Well, instead I should say what are their secrets, because multiple mechanisms are involved in the remarkable cancer resistance of the naked mole rats. And it kind of makes sense. To be able to live eight times to ten times longer than that of mice, one mechanism would be insufficient. Now, to understand the mechanisms that prevent cancer formation, you need to understand how cancer forms in the first place. And whilst we don't fully understand this process at the moment, and the variety of different ways that it can happen, cancer formation is simply a result of uncontrolled cell division. Basically, a cell just keeps dividing and dividing and dividing and dividing and dividing and so it forms a tumour. In long-lived mammals, like ourselves, we have a mechanism within ourselves that enter replicative senescence when a cell divides too many times. This is because the telomeres at the end of DNA that keep DNA intact shorten every time the cell divides. And so when the cells divided too many times, it induces replicative senescence, as any further divisions would risk the integrity of the DNA structure. So because of this, the cell stops dividing. However, naked mole rats don't show replicative senescence and instead depend on early acting anti-cancer mechanisms. So the first cancer resistance mechanism in the naked mole rats is early contact inhibition. Contact inhibition is when a cell stops dividing because it gets too close to other cells. Instead, the cells form a monolayer. In cancerous cells, they overcome this contact inhibition and start growing on top of each other. 
Naked mole rats have two different genes that are involved in triggering the early contact inhibition. One of these is P16 and the other is P27. The benefit of having two genes means that if one of the genes is silenced or mutated, the other one is still present to induce the contact inhibition. And this is particularly important because contact inhibition is frequently lost in tumours. Another cancer resistance mechanism in naked mole rats is the presence of a novel protein product that helps to inhibit the cell cycle. The gene locus where this novel protein product is encoded is already quite complicated and includes P16 as I've already mentioned earlier. But this new protein product results from the fusion of two genes, P16 and P15, that happens during the stage of transcription in a process referred to as alternative splicing. The protein product, which is given the name p alt acts as an inhibitor of the cell cycle, which adds another layer of control to the naked mole rat cells. But it doesn't end there. The naked mole rats, in addition to having these internal mechanisms within their cells to induce contact inhibition, they also have external factors that can also induce contact inhibition. For example, naked mole rat cells secrete a high molecular mass hyaluronan. So hyaluronan is an extracellular matrix component. And so human cells can also generate hyaluronan molecules, but they're six to 10 times shorter than that in naked mole rats. And it seems that these much longer molecules of hyaluronan have anti-proliferative, anti-inflammatory and anti-metastatic properties. For example, signalling downstream of hyaluronan can activate expression of genes within the locus that I just mentioned, where P16 resides. However, the intermediate steps between hyaluronan and the expression of these genes isn't quite understood yet. So how come naked mole rats can generate these long molecules of hyaluronan and we can't? Well, firstly, the gene that generates hyaluronan, hyaluronan synthase 2, catchy name, has a unique sequence that's different to what we have, and that could be the reason why the production of hyaluronan is different. Secondly, enzymes that degrade hyaluronan have very low activity in the tissues of naked mole rats. So these two factors together may be contributing to this high abundance of these long chains of hyaluronan that are present in the naked mole rats that seem to have these anti-cancer mechanisms. And we're still not finished. Naked mole rat cells are also very sensitive to loss of tumour suppressors, including my favourite protein, P53. When these tumour suppressors are lost within the naked mole rat cells, they can trigger apoptosis or senescence, stopping a cell in its tracks before it can even think about forming a tumour. And the crazy thing is, we still haven't finished. Naked mole rat cells also have a very low reprogramming efficiency which has been suggested to mean that the cells have a very stable epigenome, which can also help contribute to the tumour resistance seen in their cells. If you're interested in understanding more details about these different mechanisms, then I recommend you checking out this Nature Review that also lists even additional mechanisms found in the naked mole rats, including high fidelity protein synthesis, a more active antioxidant response pathway, and more active proteolysis through autophagy and the proteasome. But as mentioned during the beginning of this video, naked mole rats aren't just supermodels for their anti-cancer mechanisms, they're also supermodels for their long lifespan for their body size. Now for certain, some of the mechanisms that I've already mentioned that have cancer resistance also play a role in their long lifespan. But these are naked mole rats that we're talking about, so they have a few more tricks up their sleeves. Well, that's if they actually have sleeves. Anyway, an important pathway in lifespan extension in a variety of different model organisms are nutrient sensing pathways. Dysregulation of these nutrient sensing pathways is actually one of the hallmarks of aging. And it's also thought that variations in these different pathways in different organisms may help to explain the 500-fold difference in maximal lifespan in different vertebrate species, from 0.75 years in African killifish to almost 400 years in the Greenland sharks. And so naked mole rats are thought to have adaptive genetic variants within two genes that encode proteins involved in these nutrient signaling pathways one of which is variations in the gene sequence for IGF-1 and other sequences for 
the protein REB, which is a regulator of mTOR, a critical component in the nutrient signaling pathways. And so I'm going to give another shout out to a different review article this time, this one which specifically focuses on vertebrate differences in lifespan. And in particular, I like the way that they try to explain nutrient sensing as being a potential rheostat for the evolution of longevity in different species. But going back to the naked mole rats, in addition to evading cancer and having a long lifespan for their size, it's also thought that naked mole rats don't even age. The support for this observation comes from this relatively recent paper that showed that unlike all other mammals, naked mole rats have an age-specific hazard of mortality that didn't increase with age, even at ages 25-fold past their time of reproductive maturity. Now this is interesting given that I recently made a video about ageing being the price we pay for cancer protection. But I also agree with this article that suggests that we shouldn't overinterpret this data and that older and more mole rats are needed to validate this data further. But given all the mechanisms I've discussed in this video, I think it goes without saying the naked mole rats deserve their title as supermodels and are very interesting organisms to study. So I hope you've learned something in this video and as always, thanks for listening.